Good morning and praise the Lord and welcome to another 15 plus 15 where we take 15 minutes to get into the Word and let the Word of God get into us and then take another 15 minutes to pray for various things around the world as we join together both in a world perspective and also for us individually. So we're glad that you've joined us on this new week. Those of you in Manitoba, hopefully you've made it through the snowstorm and if not, Sit back and just relax, and we will get into the Word. We're over in First uh, Kings chapter 8, and we're going to be looking at verses 51 to 53. This is our second part of this section, and today, we're, it's interesting, he's going to talk to us about this whole area of the Iron Furnace. And I thought, isn't it interesting that as he's praying, he's praying about an iron furnace. <laughs> so we're going to look at that. First Kings, our key verse is First Kings chapter 8, 51 and 52, where it says, For they are your people and your inheritance. You have brought them out of Egypt, out of an iron furnace, that your eyes may be open to the supplications of your servant and the supplications of your people Israel to listen to them whenever they call to you. So again, he's adding King Solomon as he's standing before the Lord. He's adding another aspect of his prayer, as I believe even a prophetic word that is given to the people of Israel, both from the past and into the present, and to us today. And so we're going to see things like the word prayer and supplication. And again, this builds on what we talked about in the first part uh, last week and we're going to continue to look at it today and see even some of the things of how it connects together and how God wants us to enter into supplication and prayer not only looking to him but also realizing he's looking at us and he's hearing us and so when we look at King Solomon here you know he's a leader of the people he's dedicating the temple but I think more than anything, a temple doesn't have a lot of value unless there's people that come there. And so the two sides of the coin were the temple, where it was God's presence, but also the people who were to be in the presence of God. And that was so important. And so as he gives this prophetic word in a prayer concerning the iron furnace, concerning what took place in Egypt. And I was I was amazed to find out how this word iron furnace is used in several other places throughout the scripture. And so as we go into verse 51, we will see here uh, three things that I think that stand out, three, four things that stand out today that we want to look at before we go to prayer. It, where he begins to say, for we are God's people. I think if there's anything that, that needs to come through today as a reminder that we are God's people. When we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become a child of God. We are part of the family of God. We are His people. Because he goes on in verse 51 and says, For they are your people and your inheritance. And that's a key that we need to understand. Not only are we are His people, but he also looks at us as his inheritance. He made us in his image and likeness. We are his children through faith. And, you know, a lot of times, and we don't think about that, but our children and grandchildren, those who come after us, are our inheritance. Those who will continue on the name of the Lord. And so here he's saying, you know, Solomon is saying, for you are your people, for we are your people. Notice that the word your, through this whole chapter, has been capitalized, recognizing that when it uses the word your, it means God. We are God's people. Go back and look at how many times this word your is capitalized, at least in the New King James Bible. And you will see that it goes on, your people and your inheritance. That idea of your, we belong to the Lord as his people, but also we belong to the Lord as his inheritance. Think about that. We are a blessing unto the Lord. That's why when a person gives their life to Jesus Christ, there's much rejoicing in the kingdom of heaven because we're a child of God. 
and we are him. And then he goes on, and he talks about this whole idea, whom you brought out of Egypt. You know, a lot of times it had to be reminded by by um, Paul had to remind the churches now that yes, Moses was a, a, a vessel that God used to bring the people out of Egypt, but it was God who brought them out using the servant Moses. God uses his servants to do mighty things. He will use you if you will just say, Lord, okay, here am I, use me. Oh, Lord, just walk in my life. And Lord, even though I may not be perfect, even though as Moses complained and said, I can't speak well, I can't do this, I can't do that, it didn't matter because he was God's vessel that God had chosen to bring the people of Israel out of Egypt. And he goes on him, whom you brought out of Egypt out of an iron furnace. I thought it was so interesting when you think about this iron furnace. Their time in Egypt, yes, at the beginning when the fire wasn't that hot and everything else, you know, that was during the famine time that Jacob and his family were brought down by Joseph to Egypt, to a land, uh, the land of Goshen in Egypt. And they had a lot of blessing, but it was interesting how that blessing turned into an iron furnace. And you may ask yourselves, what was happening there? Well, if you go anywhere through the Bible, you would see that the time of Egypt was a time of, of uh, purifying. It was a time of refining fires. And uh, here they were in the iron furnace, and it was going to be a proving ground and the purifying of the fires. And it was important that it was out of that that God was going to bring them out of bondage to deliverance. You know, sometimes God has to allow proving fires <laughs> and allow us to go into the iron furnace to be able to get rid of those impurities. You know, the extreme heat the, 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 which turns the iron into liquid form. And then as it's burning in that uh, pot, and as it's becoming liquid form, it's at that time when the impurities are burned off, the contaminations are, are separated, and how you get the different metals separating themselves. And it's interesting how the scripture talks about this whole area of the iron furnace, how it is there to separate. Now, when you look at this, just quickly, and I know we don't have a lot of time, but quickly go over to Deuteronomy, just in case you're wondering about this again, this Deuteronomy chapter 4, uh, verse 20. If we can just get that to there, chapter 4, verse 20, where it says, But the Lord has taken you and brought you out of the iron furnace, out of Egypt, to be his people and inheritance as you are this day. So Solomon could be picking up this, God through leading through the Holy Spirit, saying, you know, hey, people, remember as we're dedicating the temple and remember as we're dedicating you that God brought you out of an iron furnace. He brought you out of bondage, and it's God who did it. Then if you go over to Jeremiah chapter 11, again, it shows up here in Jeremiah 11. It's amazing, this whole thought of the you know, we pray a lot. Oh, God, bring forth your refining fires. Well, a lot of that concept comes out of here. You know, we may want to sing about the refining fires, but do we realize what a refining fire is? You know, if there's anything that's needed amongst the church right now of Jesus Christ around the world, is there's a refining fire that is going to get rid of the impurities, the dross. It's going to make it more pure. And it's going to bring the gold to the to the place of purity. So when you go over into Jeremiah 11.4, he talks about the broken covenant that had taken place between Israel and between God. How they had disobeyed and broke God's covenant. In verse 4 it says, Which I command your fathers in the day I brought them out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice, and do according to all that I command you. So shall you be my people, and I will be your God. 
So here he, you know, they were in a, a, a fiery furnace. We were all those of us who have, who have lived in in the sinful life and and were rebellious to God. You know, you're in a fiery furnace, and God wants to refine you and bring you out like a chosen vessel. He wants to take the impurities out of you so you, you would be a chosen vessel. And I believe we're in a time worldwide where we're in, a, a, in the iron furnace. Now you say, how is that possible? Well, remember, the people of God, these were God's chosen people, Israel, right? Through the covenant, through Abraham, all the way through. And who, it doesn't say Egypt was in the iron furnace. It says Israel was in the iron furnace. His people were in the iron furnace. And that's why I can say now that I believe that God's got us in a place that we're in the iron furnace and he's turning up the heat to bring about purifying, to bring about cleansing. You know, there is no way to have revival without first going through the iron furnace. And to get the purities taken to come out of our lives, or if we are a piece of clay, that the that the that the, the the impurities must be taken out. Otherwise, when the fire begins to heat the clay, it will explode because it cannot. That impurity causes the clay to explode. Well, then he goes on, and and again, I could preach a whole sermon on this iron iron furnace because I think these set of, of messages are all about revival, too, that as we look into them. Well, as we go on into verse 52 of Kings, we will see here that what God is saying to them, he goes on, he says, not only is uh, are you God's people, but he talks about that you're also, that God's eye is upon you. Because he says that your eyes may be open to the supplication of your servant, and the supplication of your people, Israel, to listen to them whenever they call out to you. So here, not only are we God's people, but we are part of God's eye. Some, another scripture talks about that we are the apple of the eye of God. We are, we are, that he is focused on us. He's concerned for us. And God's eye might be open. He's praying, oh God, that your eyes might be open. And that when we come to you in supplication... And that, again, the word supplication is part of prayer as we appeal and request, petition, to plead humbly before us, the, the Lord, uh, to be passionate, to have a special request. And so we come before the Lord, and it says, to your people. And he says, so as, as your eye gets turned towards us, because God doesn't want to see our sin and our wickedness, that sin and their wickedness needs to be confessed so that I, the eye of God can be on us and have fellowship and relationship with us. So he says that when that happens, your people Israel, to listen to them wherever they call to you. And so he's praying, Lord, even in the midst of when they brought them out of the iron furnace, in the midst of the challenges, Lord, when they call out to you in, in the special supplication and prayer, a special humility before God, that they that you will hear them. You will hear their call. I think a lot of prayers go unanswered because the refining fires we have not allowed to do the work in our own lives. And so because of that, we, you know, our, the eye of God cannot be upon us. Then he goes on in verse 53 and shows us something really unique here where he says in verse 53 that not only his eye is upon us, that we are also his inheritance. He reminds them again, we see that in verse 51, your inheritance, but look what it goes again. For you separated them from among the people of the earth to be your inheritance. Again, here's something really amazing that's being said here in verse 53. He said, you know, he's called these people, he brought them in as his inheritance. But notice what he also did. He said he separated them as a people from the world. You know, I don't know when we as Christians are going to realize that we're to be separated from the world. We're to be separated from the things of the world. And here he says that 
For you separated them from among those people of the earth. Christ has come to separate us out, to be his chosen bride, his chosen church, to separate us out. But so often we're more interested in the things of the world than we are in the things of God. But God goes through, takes us through that refining fire to cleanse us and to purify us. Why? So that all the droth, all the things of the world will be burned off and that we would be separated unto God as his heritage. Oh, is, aren't these powerful scriptures when you grab a hold of what God is trying to do? How he's trying to separate out from himself, for himself a people from the earth. And how he wants to be an inheritance, not only to us, but to our family, to our children, to, to those that we had come into, you know, together with. And he goes on here and he reminds them how it happened. That your inheritance, as you spoke to your servant Moses, when you brought out our fathers out of Egypt. So here he spoke, the Lord spoke to Moses and said, this is what I'm doing. I'm bringing you out. I, I think it's really unique that, that if the church is truly in the iron furnace right now, it is getting ready to be purified, not to be left in there, but to be separated from the things of this world and to be brought out again. Boy, I think this is a message that needs to be heard around the world, that there is a time, a proving time. A time that's going that God is going to bring us out. So we need to remember that we're God's people, that God's eye is upon us, and God that we are God's inheritance. But there's a little thing that got stuck on the end here that I just looked at and I thought, you know, okay. And the Holy Spirit prompted me just to say, look at this. And I put down as our fourth point, God, O Lord. Or to put it here, O Lord God. And I was thinking about that. You know, what does that mean? And as I began to look in and study, that word O oh, means so often. We just think it's a oh, a, an excitement. Oh, isn't that a blessing? Or oh, isn't that a... But it, it's more than that. In the Hebrew, the word O oh, means God is everything and complete. It's a completeness of who? Oh, complete. How, how could we say this in English? You, O oh Lord, who are complete... The complete, and so we see here, oh, God is everything and complete. Lord is Yahweh to be, to, to be an, an eternal self-existence. God, who is mighty and strong, creator and sovereign. So as he's praying this prayer, he ends it with this kind of exclamation mark. That after he's prayed all this, he says, okay, Lord, you are all in all. You are everything. You are all complete. You are truly uh, self-existent. You are eternal. You are God who is mighty and strong. You are our creator. You are our sovereign one. This is all that's being put together as an exclamation mark to what Solomon is praying. Isn't that amazing? So as we reflect back, as a, a temple is a place where we look to God's presence and confess our sins and transgression. That's the refining. When we come in there, it's a refining uh, fire. And that our prayer and, and sacrifices are where we are restored to freedom and where we have become purified before the Lord. You know, we need to come together as people and pray one for another that God would not only put one in the refining fire or in the iron furnace, but he would put us all in there. You know, wouldn't it be interesting to get in a church on Sunday and pray to the Lord, say, Lord, put us all in the iron furnace today. Begin your work in the iron furnace today. It's an amazing thought. So as we go to prayer now, we're going to ask the Lord just to guide and direct us as we pray over these scriptures. Because it's not just good enough to be a hearer of the word, but we need to be a doer also. We need to say, okay, Lord, activate that which you want to do within our heart. Make it our prayer and supplication today, Lord. So let's pray as we pray about how we too were, were brought out of captivity and sin. And how we too are now in that, that iron furnace. And to realize that God is separating. So let's, let's pray. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, today that as we've looked at your scriptures... May it not only hear, but may we do that we have been a people 
that yes, we maybe have started off in the blessing and then come into the place of bondage and become servants and slaves of sin. But Father, again, you have not forgotten us. And Lord, that you desire to bring us out of that captivity of sin. But Lord, we had to go through the iron furnace first. We have to have the refining fires of your spirit working upon us, cleansing us and making us ready. But Lord, in due time, you're going to call us out and separate us unto yourself as your heritage, O God. And so we pray right now through supplication and prayer, Lord God, that we would walk in your pathway, which is a pathway of victory. Lord, you want to bring us into the total promised land of your presence. You want us to, to, to have relationship and intercede one with another. And so, God, we ask now that not only we see and know all things, but we would understand and know them inwardly and outwardly. Lord, we would see your hand of love, your great compassion. And we know that even Christ himself walked through the great tribulations and trials that came upon his life from the people and the religious people. But Lord Jesus came, we know, to set the captive free through his precious blood. But Lord, there needs to be a cleansing. There needs to be a washing. Oh God, start with us this day, we pray. In your precious name, we cry out to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Praise God. We also want to just continue to pray for another country today. Uh, yesterday, I, as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about India. And, uh, you know, if there's a country we need to pray about that can sway one way or another is the country of India. Do you know there's right at the, around the present, there's one point. 5 billion people. I don't know, can you comprehend this? Uh, the, the statistic is is it's 1,425,775,850 people. That's a lot of people. And you know that 90% or 80% of them are uh, Hinduism, 14% uh, is Islam, and only 2%, 2.3% is Christian, and 1.7% are Sikhs. And uh, we need to pray because this country of people can have a powerful impact. Already the ruler of that country has begun to push out the Christians, push out other religions, and is calling people to turn back to Hinduism. And uh, we need to pray that that stronghold, that that refining fire will not only... Uh, raise the Christians up there, but also that 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 power of anointing of the Lord would begin to uh, rework and rebuild. And and we thank God we have a, a several uh, missionaries, and I can say missionaries, but I also say believers in Christ because they're they're born in India. We we've got a lady called Angel and her family and friends, relatives, and another man named David. We have also over part of India is Nagaland. We have Mazul there. And we just need to pray for them that they may continue to be a light unto the Lord for the Lord Jesus Christ. And many of them are finding themselves in that refining fire. It's difficult to stand up for the faith. It's difficult to be persecuted and have their churches burned and destroyed and people in prison. We have it so good here. We have it so, so good here. We don't understand, but it's coming our way someday because there needs to be an iron furnace that's going to get things ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Father, we just pray right now for India. We pray, O oh God, for all that, that billion and a half people that are there, Lord, that have, been, that have gone into darkness and have followed after these false gods and false religions. And, Lord, that you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, would remove the scales from their eyes and the wax from the ears. And, Father, that you would open up their hearts to hear your still, small voice speaking into them, calling them unto yourself, calling them as a people, as a child of God. And so, Father, we ask, Lord, that you would move mightily, that you would be with the, the people who have given their lives to you, like Angel and David and Matsua, Lord, that they may continue to... Speak forth your word with power and authority. Thank you for the people that are getting saved. Thank you for the people that are getting baptized. 
and Father, that we pray that for the outreach work as they as they do various things through hospitals and clinics and other places, thing types of things, Lord, that they, they would hear your still small voice and be encouraged and empowered. We pray this in your precious name, Jesus. Amen and amen. We also just want to remember to pray for, for the missionaries in various places. I kind of separated out another category uh, because, you know, we've got people working in Nagaland, the Philippines, Pakistan, several places, Nigeria, Nepal, Ukraine, Thailand, Myanmar. You know, um, we need to pray for these people. Uh, we need to pray. You know, uh, our, our close, close friend Samson is in prison. He have a six-year prison term. We need to pray for Thailand. Uh, we, we have a friend uh, coming home, if not already home, uh, will be today, uh, Sabine. We need to pray for Tim and Bible Translator. In Ukraine, we need to pray for Anna, who is uh, in terrible situation, helping the needy there. We need to pray for Tanya and Vitaly uh, as they translate and distribute the books and tracts. We need to pray for Nepal as Marion is out there on the motorcycle bringing the gospel. We need to pray for Ezekiel that he goes out in the markets and highways and byways and does does weekend evangelistic outreach. We need to pray for Pastor Barber uh, as he has um, been ill in Pakistan that you would raise him up. We want to pray um, for Amanat in, in Pakistan as they hand out these Ruth uh, booklets across the country. We pray for all the seeds, O oh God, that have been planted when it comes to booklets and tracts. And we pray for our brother and pastor and family in Nagaland. So, Lord, uh, we, do, we just want to pray for all of these. Lord, each one of these, as we've written down today, Lord, that we pray that they are not alone, that they will not feel alone, but they will sense your presence around about them, ministering to them. Lord God, we come in agreement with them. Lord, they're a part of the body. They're not them and us and us and them, but Lord, we are together, one another. Lord God, that as you tell us in Thessalonians, we have the ministry of the one another, praying for each other, lifting up each other, providing for each other. Oh God, let there be an outpouring of prayer and let there be an outpouring of finances to these different people that they would be able to continue to to uh, go out and, and be able to proclaim your good news. And Lord, these are just a few that we're connected with, but we pray, O oh God, that you will minister to them and through them. May they be encouraged and uplifted this day. Even Samson, as he's in prison with other Christian prisoners, O oh God, may they be encouraged one to another. And may your word be the strength and may your Holy Spirit empower each one of these. You know, some are doing a variety of work, but all important to your kingdom, O oh God. We, and we pray this in Jesus' name. And then we're going to pray for various uh, people. Uh, we've been continuing to pray for Ted and Carmen, for Everett, for uh, Colwyn's mom, for Allison as he does his track ministry, as Ben is facing this tremendous challenge of cancer. Uh, another cousin of mine is Tracy, who had a stroke uh, and uh, needs rehabilitation and and and, and all all. All these needs, and there's many more. And then just for the southeast corner of Manitoba, that there would be, that, that as we find ourselves in this iron furnace, that the proving ground will, will take place, and that more and more people will come out of that, that God will call them out. And, 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 and as he's preparing them, that they will be a light unto darkness. Father, we pray, O oh God, for Ted and Karma that you would minister to them. Lord, you know, we're praying for Ted that he would be able to get a transplant or, or, or healing. We pray for Carmen as they, she's been diagnosed with this liver cancer. Oh, Father, we just intervene on behalf of her. We pray for Everett as he's going through various tests and other types of possibilities of surgery and that. We um, want to pray for Ben, uh, Lord, as he's facing this cancer. And, and Lord, that that him and his family will surround him and that there will be peace upon him and they'll know what exactly to do. We pray for Tracy, down, my my um, niece down in the um, United States, Lord, who's had this stroke. Oh, God, that you would rehabilitate her. 
and Father, that she would sense and hear your still small voice. We pray for Colwyn's mom, O oh God, that you would continue to nurture her and, and keep her in your precious will. Father, we pray for Allison as he worked with seniors and that and hands out these booklets, O oh God, that and, and other places that the booklets are going out. Oh Father, each day they're going out from the office and these Easter booklets, may they bear fruit for your glory. And then, Father, I pray and I continue to pray for the southeast corner of Manitoba, for the pastors and the leaders and the people of the churches. O oh God, that you will raise them up powerfully in the presence of your Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you got some other prayer requests, you know, message us on the side. But again, throughout the day, think about these scriptures and what God may be saying through them to us individually. Amen. We love you and Lord willing, we hope to see you again on Wednesday. Bye-bye for now.